Hello, the internet, and welcome back to the live stream. It is Wednesday, the 29th of July, 2020. 29 days into July. What's July, I hear you ask? Well, funny you should mention it. It's the idea of going live every day for the month of July on YouTube. Concept was uh, conceived by Danny Black. I've put a little link to his channel in the chit chat if you want to go and give him the support. It's his concept, not mine. I just took it and ran with it. But the idea is that he took he took the live from live and added it to July, swung the Y upside down and got Ju live. That's his concept. I'm taking it. I'm doing it. If you want to go and give the man who created it some support, that's his channel in the chit chat there. We're 29 days through. I can't believe it. It's, it's gone like that. It's gone so quick for me. Um, I mean, we do live content daily on DLive anyway, so this is just a little extension of that, I suppose. But I can't believe how quickly this month has gone. Very, very interesting to see. This It feels like I just began this the other day and we're already at the end. And I thank all of you for being here. And... Um, well, it's been a fun time. We've had some great discussions. Yesterday's discussion is kind of spilling into today's discussion because we talked, we're talking about our favorite snorkel spots and we got talking about, you know, the south part of the the the, the globe where it's winter right now, where, where I live and how to go and do a snorkel review. I've got to go to warmer waters and then there's the costing involved. And then we got talking about how how does that affect your review, the costings and whatnot. And I thought, well, what a great conversation to to like leapfrog into the idea of being paid to make YouTube reviews. And here's what I want to discuss here is my reasons why you should be paid to make YouTube reviews. But we are going to get into that just in a little second. I want to engage the chat and say good morning to everybody or good evening. But that's the conversation starter uh, today on the stream. So again, I'm going to use my examples and my situation of how I've made of how I've managed to make this work. This may not suit everybody, but this is how I've done it. But before we do that, let's go through the chit chat. I began with, hello, the internet, Benny Crawford. Good morning, Ben on. Benny's up there first. Very cool, Benny. David Prettybread, all the way from Ireland town. Hello, Benny, Ben on and the internet. G'day, David, how do you do? How's the surf down there today, Benny? Uh, Benny asked me, well, I actually went out and shot a little video. It goes for a minute and 20. So I guess I want to show it to you right now. Let's have a little look at this quickly in the break here. Very different scene from yesterday. Very different scene from yesterday. Wow. What a different vibe. Right? What a different vibe. Bit messy still. Sun's out though. Sun's out. Beautiful. Offshore, which is nice. Look this. Little left up here. Little lefty poo running through there. Oh, messy. What about the point? Maybe. I mean, I should get out there anyway, just for a, just for a hit, right? Just to get oh. wet. I'm probably going to after this stream. I'm going to jump out there for a hit. What's going on down there? On that corner. Little righties. Ooh. Little right there. Although the tide's coming in, Ooh, it's going to make it worse. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, maybe I'll take a surf today. Oh, what's this straight ahead here? Look at this. I mean, the, the thing is. There it goes. Well, there you go. The thing is, I should get out there because it's been so long, but that's to answer your question, Benny. Uh, how's the surf? Well, there it is, right? Um, Hey David, uh, Arrow Gamer. Hey Arrow in the house. Hey Benny, David, and our host Ben on. Well, good day, Arrow. Good morning. Hey David, uh, I'll jump out and check the Benny. There you go. That's what I just did. Morning, Arrow. TKK in the house. Good morning, family. TKK. Good morning. Good day, TKK. TKK in the house. Hey Benny, how's the Gives a Minute board coming along? There you go. Very good question. Uh, very well, Arrow. It's nearly finished. Wow. Wow. Looking forward to seeing the finished board. Me too. Me too. Right. Me hashtag me too. Tim, good morning all. Today I'm listening while driving, so no chatting for 20 to 30 minutes. That's okay, Timski. No worries. Hopefully you can swing into the chat later on if you get the opportunity. Uh, Benny Crawford, hey Tim, getting excited, Benny. Me too. Okay, I'll see you all in 10. And that's when I actually jumped out. I had 10 minutes to go and shoot a minute video, get into hair and makeup, and present myself to the freaking internet. 
Uh, also to airdrop the file across and get it ready, which I did, and it all worked well. I kind of like the idea. I mean, we, we probably should have done a daily surf check, right? Probably should have done a daily surf check at the beginning of each stream. That I mean, 29 days in and we've just thought about that. Yeah, really good stuff, Gives. Really good stuff. Keep it down over there. Blackbeard in the house. Blackbeard. Hello, Blackbeard. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good good day. Good evening to you. Mindy in the house. Mindy. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I know it's evening, evening for you. Um, good morning, Blackbeard and Mindy. There you go. Benny Crawford looks fun. Have you served your... Have I served with my new padded shirt? I haven't been in the water yet. I haven't been in the water for... I feel like I haven't been in this month. Have I been in during July? I must have been in at least once. But not with the shirt. No, haven't been in yet. The large swell has formed new sandbanks at this beach. Epic. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, actually, that right-hand section that I that just through the tree line, that always hits eventually. But usually it's a low tide. So... The tide's still coming in. It's going to be interesting down there. I mean, you can see just from this from this vision here, this right right where my mouse is, that that there, the tide, the the wave usually, the way the low tide is usually here. So we're all the way up the beach there. So it's going to be pretty heavy. Uh, sorry, it's going to be pretty. Unless this, and by the way, the swell's picking up again. So unless the swell gets big, the waves won't break on a full tide, which is good. The that that size was is just a little small for me. I want a little bigger. But then again, I'm a little out of shape as well, and I still got pain here. Anyway, I'm I'm probably going to hit it. I'm probably going to go out just for a half an hour and see how I go. Um, get the GoPros charged up, see how I do. Maybe I'll put the 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 beach mount camera on the beach, and we'll see what I can do. We'll go for a goal. I did see a dude out there yesterday. I watched a guy who was way out, like not only far out, but he was far to the south. So I had to get the binoculars because I saw this guy. He was out the back and it was big. It was big yesterday and windy, like howling, like crazy. And I watched this guy for about 20 minutes not getting a wave. He just, he either, every wave that came, he let go through or he wasn't, I thought he might have been in trouble. So I went and grabbed the binoculars and came down and watched him. Turns out he was just a bit of a kook. Probably, he was probably like me. He he managed to get himself out the back somehow on a massive day. And he was like, shit, now I'm out here. What do I do, right? So he's kind of waiting for a, a sneaky small shoulder or something. And I just watched him up close with the binoculars on. And he was fine. There was no dramas. But I was just like, dude, you're a... Uh, you're right out there with the. You're in the big mama section, and there's and there was some nice clean mamas. He was trying to go left, and he probably should have gone right. But anyway, I got jealous, and I was like, maybe I should jump out with him. And I'm a little out of shape right now. Yeah, that'd be a good idea if you started doing surf report vlogs. I mean, I wouldn't do a vlog of it, but I'll, I'd probably do a little live stream. I'd probably do a little, like I. I, I, I don't know. The only people that would watch that would be surface. Anyway, anyway, let's let's engage the chit chat here. So here is the chat on screen. That's the bottom of the chat. We're up to speed there. Let's move into the content. Let's move into this content. The idea is, should you be paid to make a YouTube review? Now, on a very base level of this, let's call it an argument, even though it's not really an argument, but I've heard... I've had people tell me you shouldn't be charging for your reviews. I've had people tell other creators that they should be charging. I've heard people say, I will never charge to make a review because of this reason, this reason, and this reason. I've heard people say, this is just a hobby for me, so I'm not going to charge. All of these reasons are fair and valid within their own scope, right? But all I can speak on is what works for me and how I've managed to make this channel <laughs> something before it died right because let me be clear this channel is dead this youtube channel is dead in the water <laughs> that water right there <laughs> oddly enough we're dead here folks we're dead the channel's dead um that's not to say it's going to remain dead forever but right now we're in a dead state an uppercase d uppercase e uppercase a uppercase d upper class uppercase d we're dead s this taught right the gives a minute youtube channel is dead youtube hates it it's dead it doesn't get any views but when it was popping, when the views were good, this is what I was doing. And I want to I want to go back a little, even before YouTube, and I want to I want to talk about how in Western society, now this go this is taking it far back, right? If you're thinking at a base level, in Western culture, in our society, 
every single thing that we do as adults and as children, everything we do, everything, every single thing we do in our life is geared towards survival, earning money to survive. You need money to survive. Every single thing we do is to go, is to garner not more money to make us survive longer. Is that not right? Everything like you you think about the moment you're born, your parents are already thinking about we've got to get this kid into a good school. We got to give this kid a good education. Why? Well, because with a better education, they can earn more money to live longer. Okay, great. You're you're at school. You're you're uh, studying. And why are you studying? Why you go? Why do you go to school? To educate yourself. To learn. Why? To be able to earn money. To live. Everything is about earning money. The money, money, re, money controls everything that we do. In only in our Western culture, in some Eastern cultures, and in some you know s- certain societies, in certain. Let's just say far-fetched, far-fetched areas of the world. They don't need money. They've got a different barter system, whatever it is. But I'm talking about our society where, where the majority of us here, well, certainly the majority of YouTubers, if not all YouTubers, we exist. We exist in this culture that says you need money to live and everything you do in your life is to get more money. You might say that's bullshit, dude. I don't know a single person that doesn't exist to get money. Everybody I know works to get money. Everybody I know educates themselves more to get more money, to get a better income, to get a better stable job, to get better and to and to keep themselves afloat. Everybody needs money. So if that's the case, which it clearly is, if you need money to live, why would you do something that has a monetary value and decline any money from that? So Let's just say, let's just say company Glass has a great new snorkel mask and they want this to be sold. Why do they want it to be sold? Because they want to make money from it. They got this great concept. They want to get it into as many people's hands as possible. This has value to them. This mask has value to the business. It has value to the customers because they're going to get a good mask to go snorkeling with. So the value of this mask is placed on the, 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 the value of this mask is determined by what the consumer places into the val. I'm wording that incorrectly. The value of the mask is determined by the consumer. The company that makes the mask knows there's a value to that. So they put a value on everything to do with the mask, including the marketing of the mask to get it into the customer's hands. Now, that's where the YouTuber falls in. The YouTuber is a marketing tool. They exist in a world where... You don't always need to go through a regular channel of marketing and advertising. You can go straight through. You can avoid somewhat of a middleman. You still, and this is the business, the the, the manufacturer of the glass mask, right? This, they can avoid having to go and buy Snorkel Mask Reviews magazine and subscribe to 20 different versions of that across the world. They can go straight to a YouTuber and say, well, you've got an audience here. They like your content. We need your audience, which is our target audience, our target market. We need them to see our mask. And there's a value on that. Now, they they have their value in mind because they've got a marketing budget. And any company has a marketing budget, no matter what they tell you, right? And I've had them them say, oh, we we, we don't have any budget for that. And I'm like, well, really? So you have a budget for research and design. You have a budget for the, the concept design. You have a budget for... Um, employees to manufacture the design, then you don't have a budget to get it out to the customer. Well, that's very strange. I mean, that's an interesting business model you got there. You got no marketing budget. Okay, cool. Well, then uh, we can't work together. So no matter what they tell you, there is always a marketing budget. It's always there. That's it's called. That's why it's called go to market, right? That's what it is. It's the the cost involved in going to market. So. You as the content creator have uh, requirements and you have certain um, uh, check boxes, let's call them, that you need to check off in order to come to a figure which you as the content creator decide, not the business. This is where a lot of creators will I'll be like, well, I don't know what to charge, man. Oh, they said they'd give me 50 bucks to, to make a review. It's like, I've never had the 50 bucks to make a review of 
a mouse before, right? That's a bad example because there's plenty of these out there and no one really needs to review them. But you know what I'm saying? Product A, let's call it widget. Widget A, they love using that term. So you, they say, oh, well, we'll just charge it 50 bucks. The thing is, you need to work out what you have in your own checkboxes that need to be fulfilled. And that's how you come to a pricing. Now, again, I can only speak on behalf of what I've done and how I've managed to price out my certain reviews. And let me also be super clear, and I've said this plenty of times in the past, every single review on my channel has a paid review. Every single, I've, not, I've never done a mask review that hasn't been paid except for the very first one. And that's because the history of my channel was never going to be a snorkel mask review channel. That's not what I wanted. That's you know, in a way, it's still not what I really want from, from YouTube, right? I never decided to make Gives a Minute to become a snorkel channel. That's not what I decided. That's what the internet decided. And thankfully, I'm happy it's kind of rolled quite, quite well for me, but that was never the intention. So that first video, the one thing wrong with the CV 180, which has got 2.3 million, 2.2 million views. That video was made literally because a friend of mine, Tattoo Kyrilis, Finnish guy, we were looking at these masks when I was working at the library as a photographer. Him and I were both doing the same job. And we were looking at these masks online while we were working. And uh, I was like, oh, they look kind of funny, man. Hey, well, I've never seen that. It's got this big thing at the front here. What? It's a full, looks like a space mask. And we were laughing at it. And he was like, yeah, man. These are, and because he was always talking about like, he was talking about getting an umbrella that was this really unique umbrella design. It's got like this weird, I don't know, the best umbrella in the world or something. And then he said, oh, have you seen the best snorkel masks? I was like, no, I haven't. Um, and he showed me them and, and I was like, well, we should, let's let's buy one. How much are they, 70 bucks? Let's buy one. And he's like, oh, I can't, I'm, I'm not in the right position. This is a guy who spends $900 on a bottle of rum. I'm not in the right position to spend money on a frivolous snorkeling mask, but even though it looks, this is how he talks, even though it looks funny and it's a, it's a unique design, I've got other things I want to spend money on, such as a $400 umbrella. Yeah, no, <laughs> I digress, but that's Tattoo. He's a funny dude. So I ended up buying one myself. I just bought one. And I was, because I like snorkeling, right? I like snorkeling. And you know that from me from way back. I've shown footage of me snorkeling. We talked about it yesterday, Rottnest Island, the basin. So I've been snorkeling for a long, long time. So I bought one and my plan was to just go snorkeling with it. Totally go snorkeling with it. I began my YouTube channel probably four months earlier, maybe three months earlier. My channel began in August. Shit, I began my channel eight months earlier because I did that video in June the next year. Or was it when? I feel like I be. I feel like I did that. I shot that video in the cooler months. I remember it was. A, I remember it was an overcast, cool day, and I was thinking, uh, I'm not even like I was gonna go down and do a snorkel. And I thought, oh, maybe I should just shoot shoot a review of this, right? Just make a you like make a YouTube review. That was what everyone was doing, right? Make a YouTube review. So, I, but I remember the day was lousy, and I was like, oh shit, man, it's cold. I don't want to. I don't want to do this. And even even if you watch that video, you can tell I'm not that enthused about being there in the water. Um, so anyway, that, as you know, as you're, and we don't need to talk too much about that, but that video popped, right? And then almost, almost in line with the, the video climbing in views was a whole onslaught of manufacturers seeing that video and saying, well, that one thing that you found wrong, we found, we believe we've got better things to offer in our mask. Can you make a review of our mask? And I instantly started charging. The very first company that came to me saying we need a review, I charged them for it. I think I charged $1,200 for that review. Um, and by the way, I don't mind talking about the costings that I put down too. If you want, if you really want to know, ask me and I'll tell you the costings for each video. If you if you really want to know, I don't, I, you know what? You get a you get a builder in to, to put a balcony or a patio or a veranda or something, they charge you and they tell you what the cost is, right? They, this 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 notion that this should all be hidden is kind of strange when every other job is not hidden, right? How much do you earn as a photographer at the library? Eight hundred bucks a week, whatever. I think it was even more than that, right? And, and how much does a wedding photographer charge? We charge three thousand two hundred for a wedding. There's these these numbers. It's it's weird that it's such a, a like a hidden figure. Like oh, I can't tell you what I charge to make a review. Why not? I tell you what it cost me to build a barbecue for you 
That's called the quote, right? In fact, I'll charge you to make the quote. Imagine, could you imagine YouTube is saying, imagine getting a, an email. Oh, I've got this mask for you to review. We, we're a company out of, um, we're a company from Brazil. We got this great new mask design. Even though we don't have any masks for Corona over there, we've got this great new full face snorkel mask design from Brazil. Um, what would it co what, what what would be your costing? Actually, they never ask it like that. They always say, "Can you make a review?" And then you come back with the costing. But imagine if you said, "Oh, I'm happy to quote to make a, a video. The quote will cost seventy five dollars for me to draw up. It's my time, right? I'm spending my time to quote you, like anybody, any other industry, right? You get a guy who wants to build a fence. You got to come out. I got to look at the land." Where do the tools come from? How do I bring the, the wood up? Okay, okay. So the quote is going to be uh, $120 for me to come out and quote for you. And obviously that costing comes off the total bill if you go ahead. Otherwise, the, the quote is the cost for me to come to your house and tell you what I'm doing. Imagine a YouTuber said, I'm going to, I'll, it'll cost me 75 bucks to quote. You could look at me and go, dude, that's so ridiculous. All he's got to do is send an email. So what you're looking at right there is someone saying your time is worth nothing. You as a YouTuber, the idea of you sending an email is worth nothing. Yet look at other industries, look at the lawyer industry, the attorneys, the solicitors. They charge $25 to open an email. And I know this from a fact. I had a, a, a lawyer that I was working with on a certain matter. Ended up being so expensive just to have a discourse, a one on one discourse like um, you know, you'd look at you'd look at the invoice at the end of the month and be like, open email, $25, read email, $25, reply to email, $25. There's 75 bucks just to send them a message to confirm that they saw it. So if it's okay for a lawyer, what's the difference with a YouTuber? Now you could say, well, lawyers spend years and years and years getting their degree. They got to pass the bar and whatnot. And therefore they've got more right to claim more money. So there's this whole concept of the value Again, I said it, the value of this product from the company perspective and the value from the consumer perspective. Unfortunately, YouTubers get a brown nose deal at the lower end of the market, right? At, at the level I'm at, before my channel died, I get brown nosed and the costing is always sc um, scuffed at. But I can guarantee you, Casey Neistat, when he gets approached to make brand deals and he's quoting, you know, four, four figure, five figure amounts, he doesn't get scoffed at. They'll be like, oh, sure. And you know why? It's because the company then sees that the value of their product and the value of the consumer, which in the case of Casey Neistat, this, this consumer amount is way, way bigger than mine, right? 20 odd thousand subscribers versus what, 10 million or something. So he can reach more people. So there's more value on that product from this cons from the consumer via the creator. So therefore he can charge a hell of a lot more. So all that said, it's up to the creator to decide the value. So my instance is pretty clear. I'm in the Southern hemisphere. I live in Australia. When these, when these snorkel mask videos pop, typically it's the Northern hemisphere summer. Now, Australia being a small country, uh, less population, we, we know that we're, you know, we don't even exist in some people's minds. We're, a, the, according to the flat earth theory, Australia is, a, is a, fa a farce, right? So there's only a small portion of us. So I've got, to, I've got to essentially bow down to the needs of the Northern Hemisphere. And I understand that. In fact, the first time it happened, I was kind of like, that's kind of, actually, you know what, that's, so I shot, I must've shot that video after or at the tail end of our warm seasons moving into the cooler the cooler climate because i got so many requests from manufacturers to make mask reviews on their product i was saying to them um i can quote you now but it's too cold for me to make and this is before the, the idea of going north came to me i can quote you now what it would cost to make your video but we have to move on it immediately because as you know, it's getting into the colder months in Australia and, I'm, and, and I can't be snorkeling. Like I can't go and do a snorkel mask review in frigid cold waters wearing a wetsuit. It's, it's, yeah, I could do it, but it wouldn't be as presentable as a beautiful, warm, sunny day, skin out, sun out, relaxed, conversing about the product. It's not going to put the product in its best light if I've got to be, you know, with a hoodie on and then take it off to get in the water kind of thing. So... 
that's how it happened with me because I remember there were a lot of them coming through and I was like, shit, man, I got to I got to go swimming in, in whatever the time was. I was like, fuck. And then I got thinking, well, I need to start moving north. I need to go where the water's warm. These these reviews were coming in. And I, I'll be honest, these came in thick and fast, right? And for all the ones that I did, there'd be double that that declined because of the costing. And some of them, I'd even lower my costing and they'd still try to lowball it. And I wasn't charging a great deal. Like I said, 1200 was the first one. And what I did was I ramped up my cost as my subscriber count and as the view count went up. You might say, that's kind of cheeky, man. You're you're charging more because you're getting more views. You're getting more AdSense and you're getting more money from the from the manufacturer. This is the this is what I'm saying. This is the value that the product has in terms of the consumer via the creator. You can if you if you scoff at me for putting my price up when my view counts went up and my sub count went up, then you should scoff at all the Casey's and all the Peter McKinnons and all the the other big names creators. I don't watch them these days. I can't recall who they are. Those guys that charge a lot because they have a bigger number. They charge more, right? So. I started thinking that I need to start factoring in travel into these equations. These these requests are coming through and I, I don't want to... Some of them I was saying no. Some of the masks were terrible, right? Some of the masks were easily just a complete knockoff on a lower level. And for those ones, I'd be like, well, do I? what am I going to gain out of this? Another lousy mask that's just a copy of a copy of a copy? I know what the mask is going to be like, right? They're going to be lousy. Then there were other ones that were totally unique, such as the, um, the aqua, uh, not the aqua gear, the, um, what's the name of it now? Can't recall the name of it. The one with the two, and you could flip them down, and you could go back paddling, and you could lay on your back and have the, that, I mean, this is a create, or the, this is a creator, this is a manufacturer thinking a little bit outside the square. I was really happy to do those ones because it was a new product. Um, now I've been neglecting the chat, but I will I will engage the chat just as I as I wrap this this process up. I want to just get this these facts out, and then I'll hit the chat. Um, the big the big argument against charging for a um, not just snorkel mask for any YouTube review is that someone will say, "Well, if you charge for it, you're creating a biased view." And I've always struggled with that. I've been like, "What?" If I charge for my time, charge money for my time, therefore my time is going to be biased. How does that even work? When you, keyboard warrior behind the behind the, the laptop or computer, charges for their time in every other part of their life, right? You're not doing you, nobody, nobody works for free. Nobody does their profession, does their job and expect nothing in return. Because like I said at the very beginning, we all live in a Western society where money is what makes the world tick, right? We're all, everything we do is to get more money, to live happily ever after. Everything we do. The kid in, the poopsie in, in not even school yet, in kindergarten, preschool. She's going there, why is she going there? To get skilled up, to get money. She goes to the first grade, the second grade, the third grade, why does she go there? to learn things. Why does she learn? So she can get money later on. Everything we do is to get money because we need money to live. Now, as soon as that changes, I'll change my view and I'll, I'll reassess and say, oh, well, then you can do shit for free because we don't need money. But until we stop needing money, you can't tell me that a YouTuber charging for a review is going to make a biased review because of the money. That is the most ridiculous comment ever. And if anybody says that to you as a creator, you can say, so what do you do for free then? What's what's your job that you do that you don't ask money for? Because um, you seem to think that I should do my job and not ask any money for it. So what's the job that you do? And I see you've got a nice house and a family and a, and a, a SUV there and a, a wife that that does this and that. What, how, how have you managed to not need money to do that? Like what, what, what are you doing out there that doesn't require money? It's interesting. I mean, you might have the golden key there, right? I'm just saying. And then they'll say, well, You'll get this. You get the the other response. Well, I just do YouTube as a hobby, so therefore I shouldn't charge any money for it. Well, that's a personal decision, right? That's a personal decision. If you've decided that YouTube is going to be a hobby and that's it, then great. Then continue. Like like if you fly model aircraft as a hobby, or if you if you surf as a hobby, or if you knit cardigans as a hobby or whatever it is, you've made a conscious decision that I've already got my source of income. I've already got the thing that I need to live. 
to bring money in. So that's fine. I'm going to do this in addition to fulfill me and to sustain me to to um, to maintain my um, c curiosity more more than like uh, what's a what's a hobby then a hobby is something that you do in addition to your normal life why well you want to break from what you normally do so let's just say let's just say for instance you run a business and the business is it's been your your passion for many years you studied it you 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 went through school studying and you came out of school with the qualification to do x y z business and you move into that you create your own business around it you you make you make a business right you make your business your your qualifications that you've spent your whole life learning about to get the money and you make that as a business and you own the business let's say you're a boss so you have this business and you're the owner of it and you fulfill yourself with that and you and that's how you get your money to live great that's fine then you have a hobby which is something that you take away from the business because the business encompasses all of your um uh, satisfaction and mental stimulus, right? Your, your, the way that you can exist is through the business because that's what you've spent all your life building towards, and that's working fine. You, you have that, but then you need a little extra to satisfy your curiosities, your desires, your drives. And the beauty of the the hobby, I guess, is that the hobby doesn't require the money, so therefore. The money comes from here. You can also dip in to the business and drop money onto the hobby to make the hobby more fulfilling, right? So you got the business, you got the money, you're, you're sorted. You got the family, you got the, fa the car, the family, the house, all that stuff taken care of. So you go into a hobby and therefore you hear the, the, the hobby creator say, well, I'm not going to charge for it because it's my hobby. I get that. That's a personal decision. But given that decision, no matter what happens with the hobby, you should never charge for it. You should never accept payment for a hobby YouTube creator. If that's what you've decided to do, if you've got your if you've got your thing here and you've got the hobby here, this should never cross over, right? Because that is not needed to sustain this. This is needed to sustain that. So that's what that's that's how I distinguish between those creators that say, well, I'm not going to charge for this because I'm just doing it for a bit of bit of fun, bit of giggles, you know, a bit of a laugh. I, I get that angle. That's not what I did. I created my YouTube channel and before I knew what was happening, I could make money from it. Before I even knew that I had a thing, I had a thing. And again, I never intended to be a snorkel mask channel. But there it is. I made a decision that if this is going to be an income source, then I'm going to pursue this income source just the same as I would any other income source. In my sense, they kind of correlate slightly because of the photography thing. I was already working as a photographer for many years, so I could take the photography and the, the mindset behind charging for photo shoots, charging for my time, and I could dump that into YouTube to also charge for my time accordingly. Now, if you have, if you have no time and all you're doing is... Um, I guess trolling at that point. You see a lot of creators that, you know, don't really give a shit about what they do and they put out any garbage. Well, you are basically devaluing your own time at that point. You're saying, well, I, I'm I'm doing I'm doing my main business over here and I'm doing this sort of thing on the side and I don't care about it, whatever. It doesn't matter. Right? It's 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 another decision, a personal decision, but I can only I can only really speak on behalf of what I've done. But this is, this is why I charge for my time. This is why I'm going to continue to charge for my time. And this is also why we've seen a decline in the mask reviews on my channel. So there's been companies come to me in the last eight months, I'd say. What are we now? July. At least through, at least through the end of our summer in Australia. So I guess from... November, December, January, right through to July, there's been requests. Oh, we've got this mask. We've got this, uh, you know, we've seen, they all, it's always the same thing. We've seen your video on YouTube. We love what you've done. We've got this mask. Can you make a review? I instantly reply with, yeah, sure. And I've, I've got a quote. I've got my my template that I've got lined out. It's an email, not a, not a PDF. It's an email form. And um, every single one of those has come back with the same kind of response. 
oh, that's way more than we thought. Um, and by the look at your channel, you don't get any views. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm completely, I, I don't reply like this, but this is what I'm thinking. I completely acknowledge that. I can see what they're saying. Why would they want to invest, you know, $2,000 into a review? And that's just my base cost. If it's winter, it's more expensive to get me somewhere north. Why would they want to invest two grand into a video that when they look at my channel, all they see is like daily vlogs with 50 views and other things that have nothing. And of course, I make my popular video up the top there, so it looks good, but that's been there for, for two, three years now. So what I, why I, the way I see my channel, and I can digress a little here into more specifics, but the way I see my channel, the thing's dead in the water, ironically, right? It's dead in the water. It doesn't have to stay dead, but for the time being, it's totally dead. And no, no business is going to want to invest their time or their money into a, a failed YouTube channel. That's the way I look at it. We've tried many things to revive it. We tried the wave a day with mixing the content up and doing, you know, what everyone was asking for and no difference, right? No difference. The only way to, the only way for me to, um, be able to confidently reply to an email request for a review in 2020, right? And we're already halfway through the year too. And I, and I haven't done a single one this year, but if we were to get through to my summer, and if I get a request from a brand saying, you know, we, we've seen your videos, we want you to do a review. And if I charge, let's, let's just say figuratively speaking, if I'm by the end of the year, if I'm at 24,000 subscribers, I charge $2,400 for a review. They look at my channel, they, they'd be like, not a chance, dude. The only way I could, I could ever negotiate that kind of fee for a snorkel mask would be if I could somehow get more views onto the channel between then and now. Um, my personal thoughts are I want to sort of move more into the, um, I don't like using the word, but adventure camping, right? Like four wheel driving and streaming from Steve Van is, is where I want to pursue most of my time. Hopefully that brings more eyes onto the channel. By the end of, um, what is it now, July, um, we're at 7.44, 7.48 tonight for the daily vlog. By the end of the midnight, so once we get the daily vlog all the way through to midnight, which will be another, I don't know, however, to divide, divide an hour by four minutes, whatever, it's getting closer, right? When we get to the end of that midnight period, my decision is going to be to stop the daily vlog, stop that concept. Instead of doing a daily vlog, Let's just say this piece of tech, which I did a daily vlog on the other day, right? This is the um, Black Magic Design Mini Converter. It's basically a way you can conf it's a way you can conform aud um, audio and video into a particular signal. So I don't know really what's coming out of my my OBS when I'm using full screen projector, but I know what the Live View Solo requires: 1080 30p right? A 1080p 30 frames. So I can set this using a series of dip switches here to make certain that whatever's coming out of this is effectively 1080 30. What I'm saying is I did a daily vlog on that and that's a four minute vlog, which probably will get views because it's a specific product. Whenever I do a, a video on a specific product on a daily vlog it tends to get more than 50 views, right? My, no my normal daily vlog, like oh, having a drink with the family, it goes nowhere. But a video specific to a product always pops. So what I'm thinking is where I would do a daily vlog on that, I'll do a 10 minute regular vlog discussing this and therefore I can monetize it more and therefore YouTube will present it more. That's my concept. That's my idea that I want to move into. Um, I guess that's moving a little further out of the idea of charging for your time, but that's kind of, I guess that's a full, that's a full, um, that's a full roundhouse look at how I charge for my content and why you should charge for your content if you value your time, if you if you value what you're doing, and if you want to be a valued uh, member of a community, whatever, what in my sense, the snorkel mask thing, I never thought that I'd be a valued member of that community, but I've had many different opportunities arise because of the value I put on my time, the value I put on my production, what I can do for a business. If you if you value what you do and you want to put out the best product that you can into the market, then you should charge for that. You, without a without a value, without a, a market value on your own time and product, you got nothing. People will scoff at you. People will laugh at you. They'll be like, "Well, why would I pay? Why would I pay uh, this guy when this guy does it for free?" 
and then they'll they will say, well, this guy's lousy. Look at this guy's work. It's it's always it's filled with with inaccuracies and poor design, and the product names are wrong, and all the graphics are spelled incorrectly. Well, well, well we can't really complain because he doesn't charge us. So we'll just we'll we'll, we'll go with that guy because we're going to get in front of people's eyes, and it's not going to cost us a dime. Right? That's where that's where we that's that's the end result here. A business wants to get their product in front of as many eyes as possible. If they don't get charged for it, they'll happily give it to you because it's they're not it's not that sends them a shipping bill, whatever the shipping is, that's it. And then they get their product in front of the eyes of the 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 channel. If you value your creativity, you value your time, you value what you do, you have got to put a costing on that. And with the costing comes a beautiful um uh, a beautiful security level where you can specify that this is, and this is very, very important. And if you don't do this, you're 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 going to hit disaster at some point. You can then specify in your emails, this is going to be a YouTube review. In my case, from Gives a Minute, based upon your product. And I'm sorry, I'm neglecting the chat. I'm Micah. Thanks for swinging in. I'm going to get to the chat. I just wanted to. Wanted to put this out there and then we'll dissect it a little deeper through the chat. You you have now the ability, because you're entering into a legal document with a with a business, you now have the ability to say, this is what this is. This is what you can expect to see on my YouTube channel. This is what you can expect not to see. I will not be taking any kind of, um, what's the term Tim always uses? Um, buck for... Buck for no ca cash for comment. Cash for comment. Tim always. Oh no, it wasn't Tim. It was um, old mate Creaky, right? Well, he probably did take cash for comment, right? He got he got caught with that shit. But um, you can specify that this. You not my my outline. My outlay always says I will happily take key points and bullet points from the business that you think I should hit in the video. If you've got a mask, and I go back to the snorkel mask. If if your mask has six one way valves instead of Four, then let me know because that's two more than usual. Hey man, instead of you might you might breathe deeper, you might have asthma. Well, this has got six one-way one-way valves. Most masks only have four. You could say, well, you're just you're just talking about their product. That's what a YouTube review is. That's what a YouTube review is. I'm talking about the product. I've got the key points that the business has highlighted. Four, uh, six uh, one-way valves is better than four. Of course it is. Does it work though? Let's put it in the water and test. Breathing in, breathing out, going for a snorkel. Suddenly the thing starts fogging up. Take it off. Man, this this does have six one-way valves, but holy shit, they look like they're cheap ones, right? You saw it, it fogged up back there. That's the idea of a YouTube review. All right, all right. I feel like I've I feel like I've hit that hard enough. Is it clear? Is that clear? Um I don't think I've I've overlooked any points there. I think I've managed to to uh, clearly provide why you should charge, why you shouldn't charge too, right? If you, like if you're a hobbyist, then you should never charge. If if you're a hobby channel, well, hang on. What about this then? What about if you're a hobby channel and suddenly the channel starts growing exponentially and you suddenly find yourself in a position where, well, shit, these companies are now offer. Like you might get an email saying, oh. We've seen your video on X, 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 and X, and we really need you to do a review of our product. What do you charge? So they start assuming you charge, right? They, it's the other way around. In my case, a lot of the times it's the other way around where they just assume that I'm going to do it for free, which I've, like I said, I've never done a free review except for that first one. So you get a, you get a request from a company and they start saying, we'll give you some money. Well, then at that point, it's your integrity that's on the line, right? Because you've always said, this is just a hobby for me. My main source of income is here. I just do YouTube for a bit of shits and giggles. It's a hobby. So you should stick with that and say, well, I've always said this. This is it doesn't matter that this thing is now exponentially growing. I've always said this is just a hobby. So I'm not going to charge you because I never have. Send me your send me your product and we'll go from there. That's that's if you have integrity. That's if you have um, a core um, belief in yourself, right? If you believe what you've said. Then you should stick with that. If you don't believe what you've said, and you and you think that well, just because they offered, I'm going to accept the money. Then you've kind of you've kind of just gone and lied to yourself because you had your main business, and this is just a hobby, right? So that's 
that's my advice there. But it might be different for different people, of course. Everybody behaves their own way. But you do you do blur the lines when suddenly your hobby becomes your source of income, and you haven't spec you haven't specified that to anybody. That's what that's what I'm saying. So let's go back up in the chit chat. Um, Tim says, Ben on, you could do a Ben on's daily surf report, right? If I was to do that, it would be a live stream. I wouldn't, I would not be shooting a vlog and then editing it and putting it out every day. I would not be bothered. But could I do a, a daily surf report? I mean, I could, it'd be a live stream. I'd do it. How we do it. Yeah. I, 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 look, it's not something I'm thinking about doing at this stage, but good, good point, Tim. Mindy, show me the money. Benny Crawford, yes, the best idea is to work out what you are good at and enjoy, then do that for a job, getting paid for the things you love doing. Right on, right on. And it took me quite a while to get to that, right? I um, I knew that I wanted to do graphic design. I could show you right now. I was making, I was making magazines as a kid, I was getting in trouble. I was getting busted at school because I was making skateboard magazines. Literally, I was literally cutting it. This is a cut and paste job, right? Make this is Hatman style, right? Our, this is our own skateboard magazine. That's Grasler on there. I was making these in high school. Now, what is this? This is a rudimentary form of graphic arts, right? This is me laying out a page and I was using the school photocopier. I got 10 issues of Hatman Style here from 1992 when I was in year 11 in high school. I was literally making skate magazines at school and I was getting ridiculed. The teachers were like, you can't use the photocopier for that, even though I was paying for it, 10 cents a copy. By the way, I think might have been some Corona in there. It's going to make me sneeze. I haven't opened that up for a while. Knock on up. Excuse me. I was making skateboard magazines in high school and getting told I can't do that. You can't use you can't use our, our library photocopier for your own personal projects. Instead, the teacher should have said, This dude's doing graphic design. Back then it was called desktop publishing. This guy's doing desktop publishing. Forget the science and the 27% in economics and shit. This guy should be in the art class. Nobody did that though. And what I'm saying is it took me years and years and years go by where I realized that that, that thing that I was doing is actually a job which I could have been working in. And I went and pursued graphic design. I went and paid nine grand at the Computer Graphics College in Sydney on, not York Street, on, um, it is on York Street. <laughs> No, it's not. It's just down from the. It's just down from Liverpool Street, just down from the census office, right? Anyway, that's another story. But then, when I moved into graphic design, we had to do a module where we had to sit and work with photographers. A photographer would come in with the photo. This is for a layout. Exactly what I was doing there, laying out a magazine, and we got to sit down with the photographer and talk about, you know, when you shot that, were you giving me space for the the, the header and the text, and where could we put the the credit and all this and all that stuff? And I was like. Dude, this is what you do for a living? You go out and shoot this stuff? It's like, yeah, I go out and driving the the brief will say go and get a photo of the northern beaches for a, a, a magazine and I'll go and do it. Like, and I knew I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to do photography. And I went and pursued photography. So long story short, find what you love and that you're good at and that you enjoy and make a living doing it. Bingo. Exactly, Benny says Mindy, right on. Uh, when you work with a great team, that's an extra bonus. Yep. Agreed. I agreed. Um, I'm so lucky. I even get great benefits, Mindy. Right. So, you, so Mindy, you get benefits in your industry, which is awesome. Awesome. Uh, Mindy, companies make a lot of money because people don't think of themselves and their self worth. Right. Right. You know. And like, like I said, like in the winter, and most of it's in the winter for me. I can't go snorkeling, so I have to go north. Should I charge? Should I say? Oh, I'll charge you. Let's just put a rough figure on this. Let's just say I had 1500 subscribers and a company comes. And by the way, the costing isn't always just the subscriber count, but that's a that's a starting point for me. 1000 uh, 15 sorry, did I say 1500 15 
If I had 15,000 subscribers, I would charge 1,500 as a base rate for my re my review. It would go up from there. Um, and then, so, so if you're going to go to Vanuatu, for instance, right? There's going to be an airfare. It's going to be about 700 bucks return airfare. Then you've got your time that you've got to factor in. So you not only are you going to be going there, but you're going to be going away from other jobs. That's the theory. You're going to be going somewhere to work for somebody, which therefore takes you away from other jobs you could be taking. So there's the, the time. Your time is value. You've heard it before. Time is money, right? You've got to put a value on your time. So you factor that in, the airfare in, and then what I was doing to try to bring the cost down, I would reach out to these resorts that I would like to stay at and say, hey folks, I'm a YouTuber. Um, I've got these videos where I'm doing snorkel mask reviews. I've got these this company and this company, and I would tie the companies together. When I went to Vanuatu to Hideaway Island, I had three different companies that had mask reviews lined up for me. Actually, one of them was a phone case review, underwater um, housing for a phone. Then there were two different mask reviews. I tied those three together. I hooked into a resort that would I would say, if I make these three videos on your resort, every single video on that series will be, what is it, Catalyst, Phone Case, Review, Hideaway Island, Vanuatu. Therefore, Hideaway Island gets a search term on YouTube and you do a review of a mask that pops and you've got Hideaway Island in the title, suddenly they both grow. So Hideaway Island hosted me for, what was it, five days, six nights to stay at the, I didn't, that that trip, and that was, that was the third time I'd done it with different resorts. That trip cost me nothing. And I went to Vanuatu for five days and six nights. Everything was paid for. The only things that I bought, and I still got one of them left, three bottles of rum from the Miele Bay. Everything else was completely paid for by the resort. All my meals, all my house, all my hose, hosing, all my housing, all of my uh, transfers, they picked me up from the airport. Everything was hosted for through the Gives A Minute YouTube channel. And that's all because I value my time and the business that wants to work with me values what I do. What the hell is that on my desk? It's like a dead spider. Wow, it's a piece of fluff that looks like a dead spider. You see that? I thought it was a spider. Um, so yeah, so so that's how I've done it, right? That's how I've managed to incorporate and to bring the costing down. Because if I had a if I had a fact that in accommodation at Hideaway Island, that would have put another twelve hundred bucks on top of the quote, and therefore you're looking at four thousand for, for for just a, a snorkel mask review. Now, again, if I was Casey Neistat that would be a fee that they would easily cover, right? They would pay that fee, no sweat. Um, but I'm not Casey Neistat. I don't have a, a, I don't even have a million subscribers, so I can't charge that amount. So your time is the value. Your, you have to put a value onto that. By the way, can I also just say, when I first went to Fiji on this snorkel, this, was, this is a different trip, this is Vanuatu. But when I first went to Fiji, and by the way, this bottle, can I just also add this to the, to the thing? I bought three of these bottles. I've still got a half of one in my in Steve Ann, but I bought three of these, and one of them is for Tattoo. This one here is for Tattoo. I'm keeping this separate for Tattoo. Tattoo is the guy that I was telling you I worked with at the library who first showed me the snorkel masks. I told you he would spend 900 bucks on a bottle of rum, but he wouldn't spend 70 bucks on a snorkel mask. I want to give him this bottle of rum because it's like a thank you for, you know, thank you for sort of lighting that fuel, I guess, in, in terms of the snorkel masks. But he's been going through a rough time with the next wife, blah, 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 blah. So it's, the label fell off and the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's for tattoo. But um, the first time I went to Fiji, I had under a thousand subscribers and I, I navigated a, was that a three? Oh, that was a four resort tour. So I'm, I flew to Fiji, I paid for my airfare to Fiji, and then every single resort, I did a chain of resorts, catered for me for everything. And that was on the back of one thing wrong with the CV 180. That, that video that's got 2 million views, that got me to Fiji and I stayed in four different resorts doing mask reviews and in factoring in the resort into the review. And, that's, and I did that with less than a thousand subscribers. So anybody can do it if you value what you do. If you put a, if you put a figure 
to what you do, a, a monetary figure to what you do. Because like I said at the onset, at the onset of this video, everything we do in life in Western culture is to get money. Everything. You don't, don't be confused with that. The moment you are born, everything you do is aligning you to get more money or to get some money and then Steak. to build on it. Money's still tight. Steak? 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 Benny Crawford with the super chat. Thank you so much, Benny Crawford. I'll read out what you said because she doesn't read out less than uh, a certain amount. Shyla Rose, what did Shyla Rose say? Let me get to the let me get back to the chat, folks. I've this, I've gone too far. Um, but um, Benny, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Thank you. Um, companies make a lot of worth because people don't think of themselves and their self worth, right? In every industry, they take advantage of people's low self esteem and a lack of knowledge of their value, right, Mindy? Exactly, and it's seen here on YouTube countless times. Each of us alone are the only ones that are going to build ourselves up and let their industries know that they are worth something. Yeah, right on. Angus in the house. G'day, Angus. Hey, Angus, dude. I don't know if you're still here. I know. I know my, my chat. I know. I'm, I I couldn't stop the conversation to engage the chat at that point. But Angus, I don't know if you've seen, but streaming from Steve Ann is off, dude. We're on. We're we're flying with it. And you, it's funny because you and your brother were the first people to come and take a trip in Steve Ann. So I just thought it'd be cool, you know, if you, you'll see that you'll see the live streams and the replays and whatnot, but it's cool. Um, Arrow Gamer, got to go for a telehealth check, Zoom chat, a telehealth Zoom chat. Oh, cool. Catch you all tomorrow. No worries, Arrow. Thanks for swinging by, dude. Thanks for swinging by. Uh, bye, Arrow. Bye, Arrow. Take it easy. How's it going, guys? Micah. Micah, good to see you. And sorry I didn't hit you as we came in. Like I said, I had to sort of Get this content out there. When I'm when I've got something that needs sort of um, careful thought, I it's 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 most important to get the content out and then to sort of dig back in underneath the hood later on. Um, konnichiwa, Tim. YouTube is definitely my hobby, but if I could make some extra money, I'd totally go for it. There you go. If you realize your hobby can made can be made, Marka. If you realize your hobby can become a main income then I say go for it. You obviously love it if it's a hobby, but you have to let your audience know that. You can't continue on saying, well, oh, this is just a hobby for me. You have to say, hey, folks, sit, you have to sit down and say, hey, guys, um, there's a video that I didn't think I'd be making, but I started my YouTube channel as just a bit of a shits and giggles, right? A bit of fun. And um, the more I've engaged myself with this kind of content, whatever it is, whatever the reviews are, the more I've seen, man, I'm actually quite good at it. And I'm starting to see a lot of businesses that think the same. So I'm making this video to let you know that from here on in, this is actually a business for me now. I'm taking YouTube so seriously. And so um, uh, it's become more of a force in, in my existence where my main, and you could say, you could even say like my main business that you know of, because I've mentioned it, my main business is now becoming slightly less important and the, the YouTube thing is kicking off more. And I've said that on my channel, like I, I'm not trying to smoke myself here, but the integrity is what I'm saying. I've said that before on my channel, those exact words. I'm taking less and less work as a photographer because the YouTube thing is gaining more and more. And I've said that in the last eight months because the live streaming is becoming more and more and more. I'm taking less and less and less photo geeks. I've, I'm, I, all I can do is explain this from my own perspective and my own experience. But unless you have integrity and unless you can explain that to your audience, you're only kidding yourself, right? You're only kidding yourself. So if you can be genuine about it and you can explain it, then sure, your hobby could become your main income source for sure. And you go out and say that, look, man, I'm not doing any more. I've stopped. I've told you I got asked to do a wedding recently. In fact, I got asked to do a... Um, I got pitched to do a proposal shoot and I literally, so I've, I've, de I've declined two photo shoots in the, in the last three months, not even two months. Someone who I won't mention their name asked me to shoot a proposal. I said, no, I'm not, not doing that stuff anymore. Someone who I will mention their name, Grasler, friend of mine, he doesn't mind. He started a new business, uh, manufacturing um, um, uh, sporting equipment, um, gym equipment, um, heavyweights and stuff. And he needed product work done. And I said, dude, I honestly, had you have asked me two years ago, I would have jumped at it. You're a friend, this and that. I would have come up, no sweat. I'm down here now. I'm doing less and less photography work. It would be better, quicker, and you'd get a, um, you'd get, so for me to do it, I said, I could do it and I could do it, but I don't want to do it. 
and I would rather you get somebody else that you can build that relationship with from this shoot and move forward for every other shoot. And I could recommend people up in Sydney. And so, so there's two instances where I've said, you know what, man, I'm more focusing my time on live streaming and I really want to push that content over the photography work. I'm lucky that I can do that. I'm lucky that I've managed to get to where I am, where I can do that. But if you get there and your, hob your hobby is becoming more and more of an, a potential income source, you have to have integrity and let your audience know. The moment you start lying to your audience or start uh, hiding shit, integrity has gone. And also at that point, if you're a hobbyist and you're making content that's getting a value placed upon it, then you have to do things that you might not have wanted to do before, such as, you know, being careful with your content, being more careful with, you know, getting brand names correct, getting spelling correct, proofing your content, making sure that what you put out there is going to be good for the company as well, right? If so, you don't want to start messing companies up to get right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, if yeah, and yes, Micah, good morning, all Charlotte, Charlotte Rose. Hey, Charlotte. Hey, Benny. Everything is a spider down here. And even the even the non spiders are spiders, right? Um, Emmett, Emmett Santos. Hello, Emmett. Emmett Santos. What a cool name, Emmett. Good day, Emmett. I like that. Is that, a, is that backwards for something? T-T-E-M-M-E? Emma? No, Emmett. Hello, Emmett. Benny Crawford. I have a full-time job. I don't have time to rely on YouTube to make an income. There you go. A lot of people are in that category, Benny. A lot of people in that category, for sure. I mean, do we do we feel like we've hit the subject here? I, I, I feel like... I feel like I've covered everything. I feel like I've hit it all. Um, you know what? While we think about something else, if, if you do have any other points you want to hit, speaking of not making an income, I want to give you my latest album for free. This is the Armageddon and how you can get your hands on it for free because I'm not a musician. I don't make money off music. If you want to get this, it's yours for free. This is how. Welcome back to the, uh, no, not a slightly random daily song at all. This is not slightly random, and this is not a song. This is a video to explain to you the Armageddon and how you can get your own copy of the Armageddon. Now, what's the Armageddon? It's my latest release. You know I've been talking about the music I make under the moniker of That's Um? Well, we've been discussing the latest recording. It's been taking place for the last little while. I'm happy to announce that today is release day, July 1, 2020. Why have I chosen the date July 1st for the release here? No reason except that everything kind of moved towards that being the end point of the recording process. And I figured for the whole month of July, I could promote this album getting it into your hands. I want to give it to you for free. That's the thing. I want to give you the album for free. So as of today and right through the whole month of July, there will be a link that I'll make clear to you either in the description here or in the chat. This is the link for you to go to and to nab the album for free, completely for free. You can download those MP3s and go to town. But the reason I want to talk to you more in detail about that is because I also want you to be able to get your hands on a hard copy if you want it. Now you may not want this. You may just want the songs and that's cool. But if you do want a hard copy of the album, you're going to have to buy it and it's not like you're buying it off a shelf. I'm only going to print the amount that people order. So from July 1, let's say through to July 30, right? That's the whole month. That's the order process. So if you put your order in any time in July, that means you are getting a hard copy of the album, but it hasn't been made yet. At the end of July, I will snap that process off. And if you've ordered, we'll go on and get those printed and then I'll ship them to you. Now the cost will be very, very negligible. I'm not looking to make money here. I'm not a musician. I'm a live streamer. I create content. I enjoy making music, but that's not the point of this. The point of it is to have a bit of a laugh. The only reason I want to do the hard copy is because last time with the second umming, so many people wanted a hard copy and I only had 20 made. So this time I'm not making them until I know how many are wanted. So if you do want to nab a hard copy, go to that link 
do all the things there. While you're there, grab the download. This here is not the album. This is mocked artwork. This is the cover of the album, but that is not the actual album. On the album, there are a bunch of songs. There was a time when I tried to explain It was very blunt but on the right track I smoked him hard after a bottle of Jack And what I said I would never take back But he took it the way that a schoolboy would Without going too deep into the details I recorded everything Guitars, bass, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, vocals Duncan, Buzz Kingo, on certain tracks, he came down here and helped out, added his little bit to it as well. That's all listed on the liner notes in the artwork. Another reason why you'd want to get a hard copy. Duncan down here to help out with the music was so rad. It was so much fun. But he's not the only guest to appear on the album. Out here in the ocean, one day I was surfing with a South African guy who was holidaying in the next door house. And after a bit of chit chatting, we got hanging out. And uh, he kind of said, Oh, just curiously, do you happen to have an instrument? I mean, I've been missing the guitar. I play a bit of guitar. He came in, we had a jam, we wrote a song. It's on the album. That all came from surfing right here. Just random surfing with a stranger. It's looking for the dream. Today we're gonna feel like never before. Number three, tomorrow the same. Also featured on the album is the handiwork of Lachlan Sheehan. Now Lachlan is the sound engineer with Tracer. He did a beautiful, beautiful job at polishing a turd. He didn't just polish a turd, he rubbed that thing until it shone like Jupiter in all of its glory. Does Jupiter shine? I don't know, but whatever Lachlan did, he made this stuff way better than what it was. Locky, dude, thank you so much, man. Go and have a listen to this and tell me this doesn't sound audible audibly sonically insane. Locky, yeah! There's also a few cover songs in here. Now you guys wanted me to do Four non blondes, so I did that. That's in there. There's also a Pink Floyd cover, there's also an Omnis cover, right? I covered one of my own songs. of that stuff is brand new material for you to enjoy but that's not all you know me and music my favorite band is Ween I love the band Ween and so to make this release even more special I recorded 20 covers of Ween songs and it's on this album here the point of me showing you that is that's also for you as part of this package. When you download the album, The Armageddon, you get this as a bonus free disc. And if you order a hard copy of The Armageddon, you also get a hard copy of 10 more songs by Ween.
I've chosen to call it 10 more songs by Ween, but put 20 songs on there to be a little bit silly. But anyway, that's there for you as well. And I'll also throw in some Gives A Minute stickers for those hard copy orders. If you order a hard copy, you'll get some stickers. You'll get three things. You'll get the Armageddon, you'll get 10 more songs by Ween, you'll get a bunch of Gives A Minute stickers. I might even write a handwritten note on there for you as well. But you have to do it between now, July 1, and July 30. After July 30, there will be no more orders. Whatever it is, the number that we have, the amount, is what we go and order. There'll be about a month delay between when they get manufactured and when I can ship them to you. So if you order any time between now and the end of July, I would expect you to receive your copy of the Armageddon in September. That'd be the earliest. I'd say August will be the, the production, then there'll be the mail out. I reckon September you'd get it. That's why there's the download link to grab the music right now if you want it. Don't come to me after July and say, I want the album, man. You won't be able to get it. You'll have to go to Spotify's and Apple Music and all that place to buy it. This is the one month of opportunity. It's July, the opportunity month. Is that enough promo? I don't know about doing promo for my own music. There it is, I promoed my own music. Now look, while I sit down and take a listen to both the Armageddon and 10 more songs by Ween, you guys can go back to the live stream. There's no, this is not a slightly random daily song. Just um, go back to the live stream. I'll see you there. And there I am, here I am, where are you? There it is folks, the Armageddon. Free download is in the chit chat if you wanted it. That's how you can get it for free through the month of July of which there are only two more days left. Shit, two more days. And then you will not hear about the Armageddon again. Which does make me happy, I'm telling you now, honestly, truthfully, I'm a little over it. But uh, I said I'd promote promote it for the whole month of July, and there it is, promotion, done. So if you want to get it, go ahead and click that link, it's in the chit chat, that's where you can nab it for free. If you want to order your own hard copy, you've got two more days to decide whether you want to do that or not. Afterwards, there'll be no more ordering, and that's it. The Armageddon will be gone, as will be the 10 more songs by Ween. And then I'm going to move into another project with Duncan called Pointy Logo Band. The first album or EP will be called Cut of Meat, Cut of Meat, Cut of Meat. Random Surfing with a Stranger, what a great song title. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, right. We didn't name it that, but um, only a surfer knows the feeling. That was the idea. Um, anyway, that's on the album. If you haven't got it yet, I suggest you go ahead and get the download link and get it all in down. Get it down. Get it up. Get it in. Get the download link done. Two more days, folks. Otherwise, you won't get a chance to. Now, look, have we hit the topic are we clear? Everybody fine? Nobody else wants to add any comments to the to the chat? Are we are we good to wrap this shizzle up? Are we good to conclude this stream here? Uh, we talked a lot about um, monetizing your channel and why you should and why you shouldn't monetize your channel. I feel like we're good, right? I'm um, I'm looking I'm looking towards the ocean, thinking I might go out for a wave. I'll go and double check it, but um, yeah, I feel like we're good at this point. If we're good. I think we're good to end it. I hope we're good to end it. Um, thank you for the conversations we've had here today, folks. It's been very engaging, very interesting. Glad to have been able to share with you. Thank you for the super chat there, Benny. Thank you for all the chat conversations. This is the outro music rolling. That's a significant sign to tell me it's time to end the stream and go back to regulation existence. Trying to get more money, right? That's what we do this for. Cheers. <laughs>